Hello, I'm Dr. Jasmine Huang, thoracic surgeon at St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Are you someone who suffers from unexplained excessive sweating? Well, I'd like to talk with you today about hyperhidrosis, which is an involuntary sweating response generated by the sympathetic nervous system. Now, the body uses sweating as a means to regulate our own body temperature in response to changes generated in body heat or the environment. Besides environmental changes, which can make us sweat, hormonal or emotional stimuli can also cause sweating. Now, there are two types of sweat glands that are primarily responsible for sweating and temperature regulation. And the feedback system that regulates the sweating is located in the sympathetic chain that runs along the posterior chest parallel to the vertebral column or our backbone. And this is very important to remember in cases of hyperhidrosis. So in hyperhidrosis, these sweat glands basically overreact, causing excessive sweating, and this can affect a person's quality of life. The symptoms of hyperhidrosis represent excessive sweating, which may or may not be related to temperature, emotional response, or one's activity. The incidence of this disease is approximately 0.5 to 1% of the population. So if you suffer from hyperhidrosis, it is important to determine whether or not it is due to primary or secondary causes. Primary hyperhidrosis refers to sweating that is excessive with no known cause and is unrelated to any other medical conditions. This may be in response to emotional stimuli, such as public speaking or situations which may make someone apprehensive or anxious. Secondary hyperhidrosis is sweating that occurs due to underlying conditions or diseases, such as hyperthyroidism or due to medications. Another cause may be due to diabetes, which can result in a problem with the autonomic nervous system. Now, hyperhidrosis can occur at various sites of the body, including the hands, the feet, the armpits, and less likely the groin and the buttocks. But the most common areas are really the palms and the armpits. So why are we really concerned about hyperhidrosis? Well, hyperhidrosis can result in emotional and social embarrassment, particularly in children, and it may lead to developmental delay in social skills because of worries about ridicule or avoidance of personal relationships. Although hyperhidrosis is not a dangerous disease, it can significantly affect a person's ability to interact with others and result in situational avoidance and emotional developmental delay. So there are two basic treatment options for this problem. There's a medical therapies and there are surgical therapies. Medical therapies include topical remedies which reduce the amount of sweating, but these must be applied two to four times a day. And most patients have tried this before attempting any sort of surgery. Oral medications such as anticholinergic drugs are groups of medicines which inhibit that autonomic nervous system from firing and results in the inability to sweat. Unfortunately, there are some significant side effects that occur with these medications, such as dry mouth, dry eyes, GI dysfunction, and for these reasons, they have not gained significant popularity. There's another technique called iontophoresis, and this is using ionic transfer to interrupt the sympathetic chain, but must be used daily for many hours and can be somewhat uncomfortable. And often the result is transient, and so patients frequently find this an unacceptable method of treatment. So surgery has become an effective option in managing hyperhidrosis. It has also been known as thoracic sympathectomy and has been performed for many years to treat other diseases. And in the early 1990s, thoracoscopic surgery, also known as minimally invasive surgery of the chest, was developed and resulted in major advances for minimally invasive techniques performed. The procedure involves two or three incisions on each side of the chest near the armpit. We remove the sympathetic chain at the appropriate levels depending on the type of sweating one has. There can be some complications associated with the operation, including Horner syndrome and also compensatory sweating where you have sweating in other areas of the body, mostly in the trunk, meaning the abdomen and chest. However, if the surgery is uncomplicated, you can usually go home on the same day. And most patients will actually notice a significant difference within hours after the surgery. 
And overall, the procedure will le relieve symptoms in 95 to 98 percent of patients with excessive palm sweating and in about 80 percent of patients with severe armpit sweating. So I thank you for taking the time to learn about hyperhidrosis. If you have any further questions, please call 1-877-602-4111.